Good morning. It's Monday, March 13th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Where the Red Buds Bloom. In our scriptures, Song of Solomon, Chapter 2. I am the spring crocus blooming on the Sharon Plain, the lily of the valley. North Carolina has enough pollen-producing blooms in the spring to make an allergist smile like a billionaire. My car rests peacefully in our garage, but whenever it's parked outdoors for more than 10 minutes anywhere in our home state, it develops the look of summer squash, bright yellow. While driving home on Highway 109 last Thursday, I was struck by the beauty of how the eastern redbud trees were proudly announcing the beginning of God's mysterious cycle of changing seasons. Redbuds are usually first bloomers where we live, but the record-busting temperatures last week may have leaked the idea of an early spring. Even with spring is here as old news, I just had to stop and take a picture. Beautiful, blooming trees never get old. I'm certain Solomon felt that way about his bride. Her beauty kept him entranced. Her clever mind was as attractive as her appearance. She was the complete package, mind, body, and soul. Perhaps you've wondered why a love sonnet from a poet made its way into Holy Scripture. It may help to remember the Scriptures connect our Lord Jesus Christ with the lily of Sharon's valley. There's nothing about the character and actions of Jesus that could ever be described as anything but lovely. Solomon may have been writing about his bride's beauty, but as prophets do, his message had a double meaning. His message also spoke of the loveliness of Messiah. My bride and I are transplants. In our late 20s, we moved 1,196 miles from Long Island to Florida. We've been moving ever since. Our current stay in North Carolina, 23 years, is the longest by far, and we're content to breathe North Carolina pollen until we get fresher air in heaven. Island life in New York during the 1950s was like anywhere we've traveled. Children play, adults do the heavy lifting of life and family, and God's loveliness was all around. As children are prone, we did not appreciate that when we were young, nearly as much as we do these days. On a rare visit to our roots years ago to gather with family when my aunt died, we both noticed how the striking fall foliage of our youthful home was so like the mountains where we now live. The memories of God's beautiful handiwork followed with us wherever we've trod, and that glory of God's creation was here to greet us when we arrived. Life in a moving caravan is full of experiences, both wonderfully excellent and painfully harsh. One thing is certain, God is always there, and when he shows you his loving presence, you'll never want to leave. Psalm 139, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. For you today, take some time to smell the roses and gaze at the red buds today. Even if the pollen threatens, you won't regret having a glimpse of his glory. Apostle Paul has today's last word on this. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.